Hi everyone, welcome to the Laser Channel where we learn, create, and share. My name is Greg, and in today's video, I'm going to be sharing how to attach the rotary roller up to the eye engrave by Locklick. I'll be showing you how to get the machine set up, how to configure the light burn software, and then we're gonna go even further and test the distance calibration and the orientation of the rotary roller before we bring everything together to make a sample project. And along the way, I'll be sharing my tips so that you get the best looking projects. Let's get started by checking out everything that's included with the rotary roller attachment. The construction of the rotary roller is all metal construction. The drive rollers here and here are rubber coated and they are adjustable into a number of different positions depending on the size of the project material. When I flip this around, we're going to see that there's a, a number of pulleys in here along with a belt. This belt does get retentioned with this convenient thumb screw right here. And that's because as I adjust this movable roller to different positions, I will need to reset the tension of the belt. There's also this auxiliary wheel set that is placed typically over in this area for uh, objects that hang off the end of the rotary roller. This wheel set is going to help support that and with a thumb screw on the end here, it is adjustable up and down. Two cables are included. One has white connectors and the other has black connectors. I read ahead for the installation manual and it recommends using the cable with the white connectors. The installation manual also goes on to say that if the motor just simply buzzes and doesn't turn the drive rollers, disconnect the cable with the white connectors and install the cable with the black connectors. And lastly, there's a white card that's included and I think this is probably the most important part with the rotary kit. And that's because when I flip this open, there's a scannable QR code and this is going to include all the directions that I need for setting up and using the rotary roller attachment. I scan the QR code, I have the directions on setting up the eye engrave, I'm going to remove the bottom crumb tray and install the leg extensions that are included with the machine. My first tip is for maximum versatility, I do recommend purchasing an additional leg extension kit. I'll get the eye engrave machine configured and I'll be back in just a second. It's been a few minutes and I have the crumb tray removed. It removes really easily with these thumb screws and I have the leg extensions installed. Next up, I've got a couple more tips that are gonna really help you out. The first one is I always like to have something underneath my rotary unit. That way, if uh, the laser misses my project area, I don't mark up my tabletop. I'm using a piece of aluminum that comes with the honeycomb that I can get for the eye engrave, or I can simply reuse the crumb tray that I just removed. My other tip is to tape down this piece of sheet metal for this, I use some blue painter's tape. I'll put a piece in opposite corners and this ensures that this plate doesn't shift around while I'm making a project. I'll connect the cable from the rotary up to this cable that is running to the back corner of the machine. That's secure and I'm all set. Quick tip, this is the easiest way that I know how to square the rotary attachment up to this gantry rail that the laser travels on. For this, I grab a nice flat board. I'll take the flat side and place it up against the gantry and move it all the way down until it reaches the tabletop. And then from there, I can move the rotary so that it is perfectly lined up to this top piece. And now I've got perfect alignment. I'll use some more blue painter's tape to tape the rotary down to the piece of sheet metal. Quick word about using a light burn software with the eye engrave laser. The machine does include a TF or I call it an SD memory card. On that card is going to be a device profile for setting up and getting light burn to connect up to the machine. And that's what I use. I did that off camera, and now let's get back to configuring Lightburn to use the rotary attachment. 
I am going to reference the instruction manual that I scanned from the QR code that is included with the rotary roller unit. And mainly what I wanna look for is the settings for the rotary setup within Lightburn. And I found that in the instructions and it shows me everything that I need to have selected and mainly the millimeter per rotation and the roller diameter. Now we'll jump into Lightburn software and follow those same directions. I'll enable the rotary and navigate to the top of the screen to rotary setup. And I'll make sure that I have the roller selected, the Y axis, that was that cable that we disconnected inside of the machine. That was the Y axis motor. And now I'll make sure that the millimeter per rotation is set to 40 and the roller diameter is set to 16 millimeters. That 16 millimeters is actually the diameter of those rubber covered drive rollers on the rotary attachment itself. Down below here, there's some uh, uh, object diameter and circumference. And as we can read here, this is not anything that the program uses, it's just a useful calculator. The other thing that I wanna make sure that I have selected is the start from. I wanna change that from whatever it is. I just wanna make sure that it's set to current position. Now, according to the instructions, I'm all set to start creating projects on the rotary unit, but I wanna double check those settings that we just put in. So to do that, I'm going to take an old jam jar and let me get in front of the camera a little bit better so that we can see what I'm talking about. My jam jar has nice straight sides to it. There's no taper to it and there's no lip at the top or the bottom. We'll see that I've got it wrapped with some blue painter's tape because we're going to be doing a line engraving on this in just a second. What I'm going to do is take my tape measure and I'm going to measure the circumference all the way around the jam jar. Inside the light burn software, we're going to draw a box that is the size of the circumference all the way around. We're going to then do a simple line engraving and I want the ends of that line engraving to meet up perfectly. That's going to tell me that the distance in the light burn software is perfectly calibrated going out to the rotary unit. I measured a circumference of 217 millimeters. I'll draw that box right now. It only needs to be a couple millimeters wide. I'll switch this over to about two, maybe three millimeters wide and 217 millimeters. Here's a nice look of the line engraving. It almost meets up. For most of us, this would be close enough, except if we're trying to do a full 360 wrap, we'd want to have that meet up exactly. I'm going to jump back into Lightburn and make a slight adjustment and try a test engraving again to see if we can't get that to meet up perfectly. I go back to rotary setup and the roller diameter. That typically is a nominal distance that we put in there. And during the manufacturing process and the squishiness of that rubber, sometimes it's not exactly what it is advertised. I'm going to put in 15.5 millimeter roller diameter. We'll do another test engraving and see if we can't get the ends of that test box to meet up perfectly. Here's the second one and it now it overlaps just a little bit. So 15.5 millimeter on that roller diameter was just a little bit too much. I'll try something in between. How about 15.7, that's roughly in the middle. Third time's the charm, it matches up perfectly. With the distance calibration check complete, I can go on to my second test, and that is to make sure that I don't need to mirror the output going out to the machine. For this, I'm going to grab the text tool and type in the number two. We're going to see that I'm going to rotate this so that the top of the two is going to be essentially the top of the glass jar. I'll also use the same settings that I did before, 25 millimeters per second and a max power of 15%. Line engraving is perfect for this because it saves a lot of time. Oh, look at that, I've got a backwards too. Let's go back into Lightburn software and mirror that output. I'll show you where we can do that. And of course that's going to be located in rotary setup. Mirror output to rotary. That's all I have to do is click that and I can do another test engraving with that number two.
There we go, I got it on the second try. I guess it only ever was a 50-50 chance if I got it right on the first try. The distance calibration is checked, it looks great, and we checked the orientation for the proper mirrored output. By the way, everything that I adjusted in this rotary setup, I only have to do this once at the beginning of initially setting up the rotary attachment. From here, I essentially never have to go back to this screen again other than maybe using the object or circumference calculator built into Lightburn software. With the setup and the calibration checks all complete, it's time to now make a fun sample projects and test out everything that we've done so far. For the material, I went over to the Dollar Tree and I picked up this nice cardboard keepsake box. It's got a nice lid on it. Um, of course, I wanna have something that's got nice straight sides on it, so I'm gonna ditch the cover while I do the engraving. That also makes this a little bit lighter and I think it might slip a little bit during the rotary engraving process. So I took a hand towel, rolled it up and I stuffed it in there and now it's got a little bit more weight so it can kind of grip on to that rotary unit that we just installed in the machine. I also like to go one step further, of course, and like to do what I call the roll test. I'm gonna roll it across the table and make sure that it rolls relatively smoothly and it doesn't lobe around too much. If it lobes too much, that too might cause some slippage when it's in the rotary unit and that of course is going to wreck our engraving project. I'll get this placed in the rotary unit, focus set, and we'll meet back up in Liper and Software and check out the graphic I'm using for today's fun sample project. I like to bike, so I found two raccoons riding a bike, and that's the graphic I'll be using for today's sample project. Let's check out the settings. This will be a fill engraving, and I've got the speed set at 50 millimeters per second at a power level of 20%. I just grabbed some settings that I think will leave a nice engraving on today's project material. I have the lines per inch set at 254, or for those of us in metric, the line interval is 0.1. I have crosshatch off, and I'm making sure that my scan orientation matches the cross direction of the machine. This all looks good, and the last thing I'm going to do is rotate my object so that the top of the object is going to be the top of that keepsake uh, container or jar, I'm not really sure quite what to call it. And I have the orientation of the laser is actually at the very bottom of the jar. So I wanna move my job origin over to right here. And that looks good. I think from here, all I need to do is uh, get some background music in, get my safety glasses on, and we'll watch a little video montage of this fun project being made on the Locklick rotary attachment. Project's complete and I haven't checked this out, so let's take a look at this together for the first time. I think that looks pretty good. I do have a little bit of engraving dust on there. I'm gonna go blow a little bit of uh, compressed air on that and I'll be back in just a second. This fun sample project turned out perfect. What do you think? Let me know down below by leaving a comment. This rotary project was a lot of fun and it was really easy. It was also really easy to set up the eye engrave machine and place the rotary unit inside of it. Following the instructions, everything is straightforward. The same goes with the software setup. As we saw when I referenced the, uh, the instructions, there's just a couple of check boxes and a couple of uh, entry points that I need and the machine is set up pretty close to perfect. We saw when I did the calibration checks on the distance and the output, I made some minor adjustments. And for me, I like to spend that little bit extra time to make sure that I get the best performance out of my laser equipment. I had a ton of fun creating today's content for all of you. And don't forget to show this video some love by dropping it a like and subscribing to the channel. 
Not only is it a great way to help the Laser channel grow, it's an awesome way to connect video content like this with other great viewers just like yourself. If you're looking to get more out of the Laser channel, you can become a member by clicking the Join button down below. You'll get early access to select videos and exclusive members-only content. Until we meet again in the next video, learn, create, and share.